and I'm going to start by sharing my screen with you. So let's start with that one. And welcome everyone. Um, as I mentioned in my email, uh, I'm going to look this week about playing hands in suit contracts and different ways of playing them, different approaches. And I thought I'd start by looking at this hand, which was played last Monday. So if you played a week ago, you may recognize this hand. It was generally played, as you can see, in four hearts, but most people did not make 10 tricks. You can see the three people did make 10 tricks for 424, 2170, but the rest all went down in four hearts, whereas according to the computer, it should be makeable, uh, makeable contract of four hearts. So what I wanted to do is look at this hand played in some different ways and see which way works out best. So the other thing I want to do is just, if you have a look at this, this is off of the Pinnabridge website, you can see that North South have only got uh, 21 points between them. The points are evenly balanced. And yet four hearts can be made because of the good distribution. And well done to those of you who bid four hearts. So let's um, have a look at the hand. This is the other way you can look at the hand on BBO. There's a link there. And here you can see the traveler for that hand. And again, you can see that it was uh, generally played in four hearts with only three people making it. So you can go ahead and replay this and see how you played it. And I, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to replay the hand. The only thing I've done on this screen is I've removed the player's names because I don't want to embarrass anyone. But I just want to look at how uh, you should play this in a contract of four hearts. So this was one time it was played. And I think the bidding is pretty good here. Um, North should probably pass, um, East, sorry, uh, East is dealer, East should probably pass, South should um, pass, West should probably pass, and North should probably open one club there. It's, um, it, it's a close call, but I think you should bid there, one club, then it would go one spade, and South, you should bid two hearts. That should show at least 10 points, your partner will support you, and most people ended up in four hearts here. So I want to have a look at how it should go in four hearts, uh, played by South, and assuming the opponents lead a spade. So let's have a little think about this one. This is really the time to give this your, uh, your full attention and try and make a plan. And I'd like you to look at the suits one at a time and try and figure out where you're in danger of losing tricks. So take a moment every time you're in a suit contract and try and figure out where you may lose tricks. So take a moment and try and work that out. Well, let's start off in the spade suit. It looks like we're going to lose one spade. Okay, we're missing the ace. Um, I don't think we're going to lose any hearts because we've got very good trumps between us and dummy. We've got one diamond to lose. Okay, so that's one spade and one diamond. And the other suit where we're in danger of losing tricks is in clubs. Now, how many club tricks would you expect to lose here? Two. Any other thoughts? One. One. Well, it's one or two, isn't it? Actually, it could conceivably be zero, but we'll come on to that in a moment. But it, it's we're missing the king and the jack. But apart from that, we've got all the high clubs. We've got the ace, queen, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. So if we lose to the king and to the jack, we'll lose two tricks. And if we can avoid losing one of those, we'll only lose one trick. And that's our hope on this hand. It's really our only good chance that we're hoping to make uh, to lose one spade, one diamond, and one club. Okay, 
Now, the other way of planning a hand like this is actually, if you have time, to try and count where your likely tricks are coming from. And that can be helpful too. Some people find that more useful and it can be helpful here. So if we count our tricks, how many clubs are we hoping to make? At least four. Well, the answer is four. If we lose one club, okay, yeah. then we'll make four club tricks, won't we? We've got four clubs. We've got five hearts, okay? Yeah. That's nine tricks. And we're going to make a spade. And that will be our ten tricks, okay? So that's how we're going to make our ten tricks. And you can count it either way. You can count it as making four clubs, um, uh, count your winners, four clubs, five hearts, and a spade. Or you can count your losers, that you're going to lose a spade, a diamond, and a club. And it should come to the same thing. Now, how are we going to play this? Let's suppose at some point we gain the lead. Now, some people on this hand, they uh, let, let's suppose the opponents win that first trick. Sorry, I'll just um, advance to the next trick. Let's suppose your opponents take that first trick. So we've lost a spade here immediately, and we're going to lose um, a diamond and presumably what hopefully just one club. Um, and in our own hand, we actually have some spade losers. In the south hand, we've got the nine and seven, which are two potential losers. And you have different ways to try to get rid of those. Um, and some people, and we'll see this in a moment, try to rough those spades in dummy. But on a hand like this, the other way to get rid of those spades is to discard them on the clubs. The way to plan this is to realize that there are five clubs in dummy and only three in your hand. So that means that the clubs will provide two discards, and on those two discards you can discard two spades. And you don't have to rough any spades at all on this hand. So that's really what you should be doing on this hand. It's a much safer line to um, just discard the spades on the clubs rather than trying to rough the spade. Some people tried that, and you'll see that it didn't go well for them. Um, even if you rough spades, it doesn't really help you, because the crux of this hand is to only lose one club. So roughing the spades is really a pointless activity here, and it's much safer to try to set up the clubs. Now, let's have a look at that club scene because um, I entered this um, combination into suit play just to see what it would come up with as the best way to play this suit combination. And I entered the ace-10-9-8-3. You can do this yourselves, and the queen-7-6. Um, and you can see that suit play is telling you, if you enter that, that you have a 76% chance of making at least four tricks there. Okay, do you all follow what that's um, saying there? So I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to uh, just uh, mute every, try and mute everyone again because it's uh, someone's got some background noise. So let me just do that. Someone's got some uh, echoing going on. Okay, all right, that's better. Um, so what it's saying is that there's a 76% chance of making at least four tricks. Um, there's actually a slim chance, 2.8%, of making all five tricks here. And what it's telling you is that the way to play this suit combination is to start by leading the queen. And over here on the right, you can see that the only time we'll make only three tricks is if the king and jack are both on our right. These combinations on the right here, at the bottom here, will lead to us only making three tricks. Whereas all the other combinations, if we play it that way, will lead to four tricks. In fact, one combination will lead to all five tricks if the jack is a singleton and it's on our right. So the queen would win and then we'd be able to 
without it going to the king. So we have an excellent chance of making, um, uh, well, 76% chance, you decide whether that's excellent or not. But that's our best chance here, playing the clubs <coughs> and avoiding more than one club trick. And if we can do that, then we'll have our 10 tricks. Okay, do interrupt me if you have any questions on this. So on this hand, I know a lot of people have a great urge, and you'll see this, to sort of cross rough, to rough, try and rough diamonds and try and rough spades. But it really is a poor choice. This is how this one went. They took their ace of spades and they led the ace of diamonds. So they've taken uh, two tricks. They led another diamond, which Declara roughed. Okay. And now Declara played the queen of spades. I don't really think that's necessary, but they did that and they threw away the diamond. Um, they haven't really achieved much there because they were never going to lose another diamond because they could always rough if necessary. And then they started drawing trumps. So if I'm watching this, I say, good, this is a good start. They're drawing trumps here. They drew a second round of trumps. And now there's still a trump out, but they decided to try and rough a spade. And this is really not a good line. I'll just bring up the four hands at this point so you can see what happened. They, um, they successfully roughed that spade. Then they played um, a club back here. And they're not playing the clubs the best way here. They're, they're all, they might only lose a trick here, but this is not the right way to, to play this suit combination. And what happened was that they lost to the jack. The opponents led um, another diamond, which was roughed in dummy. They played a club. And because they haven't drawn trumps, East was able to rough. They roughed your ace. Um, and, uh, and now... Your, uh, your, sorry, it just it just stopped there. But um, having roughed your your ace there, sorry, yes, having roughed your ace, they then play the diamond, which you were able to rough. You now play your heart, but you've got a club loser at the end. And so this declarer only made um, eight mm -hmm. tricks on this and went down two. All right, let's have a look at it played another way. Um, actually, I'd like to discuss the bidding on this one because, again, it started one club, one spade, and South doubled here, which should be a negative double to show the uh, unbid suits. In other words, here it should be showing hearts and diamonds. So I don't really agree with that bid there um, uh, because you've got hearts, but you don't have diamonds. Also, you have five hearts here. Um, so you really should bid the heart shots not. Anyway, they still end up in four hearts. It went two spades, three hearts, four hearts. But this time it was played by North. So North ended up here in a four heart contract. And East was on lead. And East led their singles. And they led the two of clubs. Now, what do you think of that lead? I know it's tempting to lead a singleton. Um, in the hope of getting a rough uh, later on. The only problem on this hand is that you're leading into the north hand where they've opened one club. So you could easily be helping Declara set up tricks in that suit. Um, so I'm not really a fan of leading a club singleton in that situation. If that had been a suit bid by Dummy, that would be more attractive. <coughs> but leading into Declara's hand is not so attractive. What happened here was that um, Declara played uh, the six from Dummy, and West made a terrible play of playing the king there. Why is that a terrible play? Well, because they can see Dummy. They can see the queen in Dummy, and they know they don't have to play the king there. They can play the jack. So maybe they weren't paying attention, but this is what happened. They played the... Uh, king, it forced out the ace, and now you can see that you've set up uh, the queen for Declara. Anyway, Declara then gained the lead and started by drawing trumps. And she played all three rounds of trumps, which was good. Then uh, she played 
a club. Now, here, because the clubs have already been played, you're going to play it slightly differently. If you played a club, the queen won the trick, but it, the jack is still out there. So, but that's fine. We were always prepared to lose one club trick, but all the rest of the clubs are now good. De Clara played a spade at this point. Um, they got in and cashed their diamond. De Clara the roughed and then played a club. Now the opponents get in there with their jack. You can't prevent that. But whatever they play back now, here De Clara roughed and now the last two clubs were good. So De Clara played the clubs, throwing away uh, spades and made uh, 10 tricks there, okay? So that was uh, an example of it being played well, and also to comment that the opponents didn't really find, well, the, the lead they made was perhaps a bit helpful for the Clara. Let's have a look at this played another time. This time they stopped short of game. It went one club, one spade, two hearts, three hearts. And West was on lead here, and I would have expected West to lead a spade here, but they actually led a diamond. They led the five of diamonds. Now, that is an unusual lead because your partner have bid spade. You and your partner have bid and supported spades. I would expect your team to bid spades. And if they do lead a diamond, what's the right diamond to lead in this situation from king, queen, eight, five, two? King. king. It's the king. Against a suit contract, you leave the top of the two-card secret. If that was no trump, that would be right to lead four fires. But against a suit, you should have led the king. Well, they led the five. And then East here made, uh, again, a very poor play of playing the jack. They did not play the ace. Now, it didn't matter on this hand. It didn't make a difference. But if you were East and you played the jack, that is definitely wrong. The only time you would not play the ace here as if there was an honor in Dami that you were trying to keep covered. But here, the jack wins the trick. Um, didn't cost you anything, but you lead back a diamond and declare a roughs. Now let's see what happened next. Declara started off drawing trumps, which is what I think is the right thing to do. They drew two rounds, um, and now they played a third round. Great. So they're on, in good shape now to, uh, to make 10 tricks. They even played the clubs well here. They led the queen of clubs. The king is played. They over um, beat it with the ace. And now I hope you can see they're only going to lose one club trick, which is your goal on this hand. Um, they came, they played a spade. The opponents played a spade and you won that. And now the defense, at, and now Declara played another spade. And that is another mistake here because there's no need to play spades and rough them. Your clubs um, are good and um, you, you should be playing the clubs and not the spades. In fact, on the previous trick, I don't know if you noticed, here where a spade was played, De Clara made a mistake here of throwing away a club. Okay, so when the spade is played and you win it with the queen, you should not be throwing away your club. Your, your clubs are good now, except for one trick. So you should have thrown away a diamond. They threw away a club. Um, then they roughed. And then they played a, uh, a club back. And believe it or not, at this point, um, West kind of made a, a mistake here. If I click on the GIB button, you can see that you can hold the Clara to nine tricks if you play low because that cuts them off from those good clubs in dummy. What they actually played was they played the jack, and now Declara will get to cash two clubs. So they played a diamond, which Declara roughed, and then they played a club, and they claimed the last two tricks. So they made 10 tricks there, although they had a chance to be defeated the way they played it, uh, to only make nine tricks wrong. Okay, any other comments on that? Do let me know. Let's have a look at this played another time. Um, this time, again, they're in four hearts. They led a spade. They took a spade. And again, they led a club here. And this time it's being played by South. And I'd be a bit reluctant to lead a club here because you're leading into dummies 
strength there. You can see that there. Um, De Clara played the queen there, and they uh, took the beat it with the king, which lost to the ace. So really, that has helped De Clara establish the clubs. They're now almost established, except for one chick. What happened next, though, was that instead of drawing trumps, De Clara played a club. That's a totally unnecessary risk there. And of course, it got roughed. OK, um, so now the opponents take their diamond. You rough the diamond. You play a spade, discarding clubs. Again, that's not really a good play. And they played their spades, um, planning to rough here at this point. They're cross roughing here, but it's um, it's sort of too late in the sense that they've already suffered a, a rough. Here. So they play uh, a spade, which they rough. They play now. They start drawing trumps. Okay. Um, and at this point, they've just won the um, the king, but they're, they're going to be defeated. I think the, the replay didn't go right through to the end here. But you can see that whatever happens now, there are uh, three tricks to go. And the best declarer can do is, is lose one club. And they haven't managed to make use of those clubs in time. And then just one last time to look at this again, played in four hearts. Um, here they led a spade again. Here again they led a, a club back. And the queen was played. They played the king, which lost to the ace. They then started drawing trumps, which is what I agree with here. Uh, but they didn't draw that last trump. They thought about maybe cross roughing, so they lost a diamond there played a diamond, which they roughed. They cashed the queen of spades, discarding a club, which again is I don't really agree with. Uh, and then they played the clubs. And West was going to take their jack, but unfortunately their partner roughed it. Their partner roughed their winner. Okay, so East was obviously so keen to rough that they hadn't realized that their partner was already winning the trick. And so they gave Declare a chance to make this contract. Um, having roughed it, they played a spade, which was roughed in dummy. And now Declara played the last two clubs and uh, made 10 tricks there, more, more by luck than, than uh, good play there. OK, any comments on that? You, you can look at this, um, you know, if you if you made a mistake, then do sort of, I suggest you do look at it and try and work out you know, what went wrong and how you should have played it. But the crux of this hand was deciding on the line of play, on the best line of play. And the best line of play here is setting up the clubs and only losing one trick there. And cross roughing, roughing the dimes, roughing the spades does, it doesn't do you any good. It makes you more vulnerable to over us if you haven't drawn trumps. Anyone have any comments on that one? So I, I see again and again people, you know, have this desire to cross rough, but it's not by any means often the best line uh, to play. I wanted to look at another hand that involved some roughing. This hand was actually played when before we were in lockdown. It was played in, in uh, Northwood. And you can see this hand was generally played in a spade contract, often four spades. And although that contract is makeable according to the computer, um, no one made 10 tricks. You can see the best score was three spades making. All the other contracts went down. And I, I wanted to highlight this one because this is perhaps one of the easiest contracts you'll ever have to make. If you play it the right way, that is. Um, this is the hand here, and this is how the bidding might go. One spade, two clubs, two diamonds passed, two spades, four spades. Um, just, I'll just comment on that opening one spade bid, um, because some people with this hand prefer to open one no trump. Um, it is a fairly balanced hand, and you do have uh, 12 points, I think. I don't know if I've said that, 12 points. 
So one no Trump is an option there. The problem with opening one no Trump, if you have a good major suit, good five card suit, is that there's no way of finding a fit. There's no way your partner will find a fit. They'll either go, uh, if you open one no Trump, they might go to two no Trump or three no Trump, but you may well miss out on a spade. So I prefer with a good five card uh, major to open one of the major, although I know opinions differ on that one. Anyway, let's suppose you arrive at a good contract for four spades. Um, have a look at the two hands and see if you can tell me how many losers you have all together there. Well, we have three club losers. We have no diamond losers. And we have a heart loser in the south hand, don't we? Mm. But we're going to avoid that. How are we going to avoid that heart loser? Trumpet or discard? Yeah, well, it's trumpet or discard. But this time, the easiest option is to trumpet, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's quite straightforward, really. Um, and this should be an easy contract, although for some reason, no one made 10 tricks. Maybe you get that sense of despair as the opponents start off with clubs, because they take three rounds of clubs. You can't do anything about that. And of course, you can't lose any more tricks now. Whatever they play now, suppose they play a diamond. Well, what we're going to do is uh, win this one. And then we've got to decide, do we want to draw trumps now, or do we want to delay drawing trumps? Well, you have eight spades between yourself and dummy so one of your opponents has at least three that means it will take three rounds to draw the opponent's trumps at least and you would not have any spades left to rough your last card so all you have to do is delay drawing trumps until you've roughed a heart so play a heart win in the shorthand first with the ace play a heart to the king and then play a heart and when that heart is played, you're going to have to think about what to rough with. Um, Check. Yeah, I mean, you could rough high. The, the chances of an over rough here are, are pretty low, in fact, yeah. because, you know, you, 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 there are only two, you only started with five hearts. So you could rough with a jack, um, or it turns out on this hand, you're okay to rough with a nine because they mm. still have a heart. But either way, you're going to avoid that heart loser. Now you've done that, what are you going to do? Ace. Yeah, draw trumps now. So let's just play the ace. Let's play the jack. We can come back to our hand with a, a diamond, draw the last trump, and we should easily make 10 tricks there. So again, uh, very few people, uh, well, no one made 10 tricks on this one. Uh, and it was just a matter of roughing in dummy. So that's a you know, really important technique. Um, here's another one um, where you opened a diamond. It went one heart, one spade, two diamonds. So your partner's got a weak hand, six to nine points, but prefers the diamonds to your spades. The opponents lead a club and down comes dummy. And you can see that your partner does indeed have eight points only, um, and you hope you'll make two diamonds here. Now, can you stop for a minute and tell me how many losers you think you have? Count it from the point of view of the hand with the long trump suit, but taking into account all the strength in dummy. How many total losers do you think you've got here? Four. Any other thoughts? Four, five. Let's go through the suits one at a time. Two club losers, I presume. Now, diamonds, we're probably going to lose one trick. We've got five diamonds, but we're missing the queen and the jack. So I think we're most likely to lose one there. And unfortunately, we've got two heart losers as well. Yeah. Okay. Yellow one, not the five. black one, the yellow. Okay, if you could... Uh, there's some background noise there, child noise. Um, yeah, so we have um, five losers there, two clubs, two hearts, a diamond. 
this hand um, depends on not losing a spade. Do we have a spade loser here? No. Well, that's not true. We may lose a spade here. Um, we've got the ace, king, queen, but we only have seven spades. So unless the suit divides evenly, three, three, we do have a potential loser. So we actually have five, maybe six losers potentially. Now, we hope it doesn't come to that. Let's see what happens. The opponents uh, start off in clubs, which was the unbid suit. And they take two clubs and they play another club. That's reasonable because um, there's another club in dummy, but you rough that off. Now, what you're going to do on this hand is you expect to lose a diamond, but this is a good time to play two rounds of diamonds, the uh, king and then the ace, and then to stop because there's one high diamond out and it's the queen. And what we're going to do is let them rough with it. Don't draw that last trump because we may find it's better for us to hang on to our trump. What we're going to do now is just go about our other business of trying to catch our spades. And we start with the ace of spades, play another spade and a third spade we win. And you can actually see you've got a, a losing spade now, but because you haven't drawn trump, because you've kept that diamond in dummy, um, you can play your last spade and you can rough it in dummy. By the way, you don't care if this gets over roughed, because if it gets over roughed, it's with the queen and that was always going to lose a trick. So you uh, here it doesn't get roughed, so you're just going to lose uh, two hearts and a diamond. Now, whatever you play now, the opponents will take their uh, diamond, take their heart, and you're left with the diamond at the end. But you manage to make um, eight tricks on this hand. And again, this was a hand where you needed to rough a spade in dump. But you drew two rounds of trump, slightly different technique to last time. You didn't draw them all. You left the last high trump out. So that allowed you to rough a spade, if necessary, in dummy. Again, when this hand was played in two diamonds, very few people made it because they ended up, I think, losing a spade as well. Okay. Is it ever right to rough in both hands? Yes, of course it is sometimes. And this is one such hand where, let's suppose you open a club, that's a suit below the singleton, if your partner bids a diamond, you bid a heart, and then they jump to four hearts. And suppose your opponents lead a spade on this one, and <coughs> let's try and make a plan of how we're going to play this one. And this is, is a different hand to the, the other ones, because this time I don't really want to draw trumps at all, because I've got good opportunity to rough the... Um, diamonds and rough the clubs and I can do that here um, and I, I want to do it and I don't want to touch the trumps. What, what's um, the other thing here is apart from the minor suits and trumps the only other tricks I've got are in the spade suit and I'm hoping to make those two spades I can hopefully do that without them being rough there's a very small chance that they get rough so this is a hand for cross roughing, okay? If you don't cross rough, if you just start by, say, counting your tricks, what it comes to is that you've got two spades, four hearts, and you've got two aces, one in each minor. So that comes to only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tricks. So here you can do much better by taking your trumps individually than by cross roughing. And this is a good time to be cross roughing. All right. And it's really important to see that this is one that cross roughing works. But on the other um, earlier example, it's not a good idea. And, and if, if you have an opportunity to establish a suit uh, to take care of your losers, that's a much better option.
But here we are only we're going to make our contract by cross roughing, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually start by um, playing a diamond and then maybe roughing a diamond. And as we rough, we're going to start roughing with low trumps. And then we're going to play a club back and rough that. And it, it's a very good idea. Sorry, before, uh, sorry, I wanted to just go back here. It's a very good idea before we um, go too far in this to actually catch any tricks in any side suit. So you've got a spade here. So it's a good idea to cash that spade. Otherwise, your opponent will throw away their spades and you might not be able to cash it later on. So now we continue with our cross roughing. We rough a diamond. We rough a, another club. And at this point, you can see that you've got just high trumps in each hand. So even if the opponents are out of clubs or out of diamonds, they can't over rough you because you've just got the ace, king, queen, jack. So you just take those tricks as separate tricks and you end up making all except one trick. You lose one, uh, one trick at the end. So in other words, basically, instead of just making four trumps by drawing trumps, you made a total of eight trumps by cross roughing, by roughing one, one hand and then the other hand. So that was a good technique on this one, but it doesn't apply to all hands. So I would say actually cross roughing like this doesn't come up that often. Much more common are the techniques of roughing losers in the short hand and then uh, establishing suits and discarding losers on your long suit. So those I think are the much more common plays, whereas I know a lot of people think about cross roughing as soon as they see shortage as they immediately drawn to that. So that was all the topic I wanted to cover today, um, various ways to play hands in suit contracts. Anyone have any comments or questions on those? Is that all straightforward? Um, I'm just going to stop the recording there. Um, that, that's the end of the talk.